This is an introduction to natural disasters, lab number one, and uh, should provide a few of the concepts and procedures that will help you um, finish the lab more easily. Um, if we look into the lessons section and the lab assignments subfolder of lessons for natural disasters class, you'll see that uh, the first lab that's um, available is called virtual discharge and there are actually two different um, components to this lab one is an answer sheet which like this after it's been downloaded and you'll need that you can fill in your um, answers in word um, and then print it out or print it out and write the answers on it if you wish um, the other thing is uh, is link to and or the link to the lab exercise it's a wordpress um, web page and in order to use it um, since Angel doesn't support hyperlinking very well you need to um, hold down the mouse or hold down the uh, mouse button and select it and then control C to copy and um, paste that into a new browser um, with control V and that'll take you um, right to the start of uh, uh, of the lab exercises in this WordPress web page and there's for lab one click here and click here is where we go and um, this lab I'll go over very very quickly stopping only at a few of the more significant um, places it says where do rivers get their water um, there's some description it's uh, much of it is uh, a few pictures and some review from lecture and uh, these first pages tell you about um, lecture review um, and groundwater um, and you continue with the next buttons through this. Um, page 3 is very important. It uh, highlights the concept of stream discharge which we talked about in lecture as well. Discharge is a volume divided by a time. It's an amount of water that passes a point in a certain amount of time and that's uh, an important concept. Um, the uh, Discharge is also equal to the cross-sectional area times the velocity in the stream. And two of the questions, and uh, why don't I do one of the example questions in the um, handouts here. Let's do question number eight. It says that we have a 25-foot wide stream, and its depth is six feet on the average and its flow rate on the average is two feet per second. So question eight and also question nine allows us to ignore the uh, variability of the velocity depending on depth in the stream and it also allows us to assume that the stream is um, a nice neat rectangle. A nice neat rectangle with the same flow, the same velocity everywhere. So in that case it fits the definition um, the simple definition perfectly it's 25 feet wide and 6 feet deep and therefore it is 150 square feet in cross section and the velocity is 2 feet per second so um, the velocity times the cross sectional area 150 times 2 gives 300 cubic feet per second and the uh, answer is uh, 300 cubic feet per second. So that's an essential um, basic concept of how we measure the total amount of um, flood of water in a, in a stream including floods and it's the basic definition of what discharge is. Um, a more complicated concept um, we'll see when we um, make this plot of stream velocities um, versus the depth or position in the stream and uh, see how we're going to compute the um, average velocity um, in a stream even when the velocity varies from one position to another. And to do that we'll continue in the uh, demonstration here um, and that's the, sec the most important and difficult concept I want to present. Page 4 only defines the left bank and the right bank of a stream um, and that depends the left and right depends on which direction um, the river is flowing um, with respect to you so 
facing upstream or downstream, the left bank and the right bank switch. That's the extent of page four. Um, page five um, only gives a, uh, gives a brief discussion of how we measure the uh, velocity in a stream. Basically, it's, uh, it's very much like one measures the uh, wind velocity. There's a spinny thing with cups that's placed in the stream, and the water makes it turn around. And that result can be um, measured or can be um, recorded, uh, reported on a, on a handheld device. Um, moving ahead to the next page, um, begins to introduce the question of um, how the uh, velocity in the stream varies with depth. And the next page, again, continues to introduce that concept. Where is the velocity measured? We, what we would like to do, the ultimate goal of, the net of this uh, 20 to 30 minute computation you'll be doing is to actually figure out where in the stream the average velocity actually occurs. As you recall, if the velocity is slower than average near the bottom and near the sides, and it's faster than average at the surface in the middle, but where exactly does the um, average velocity occur? We'll make that computation. Um, what would be good right here um, is to, there's a click here to see an animated stream that we'll go ahead and use for the uh, computations. We click here, and I'd like to say open in a new tab so that I can keep this, uh, these pages going as well as the demonstration in the new page. And uh, should be here, and I, apparently I need to click again to download the attach, to get the attachment. And what we have here is um, a stream, and my apologies for the uh, little extra garbage that didn't get uh, masked out. Um, but the, the important part of the stream that we'll be looking at is the main part here. We have a built-in stopwatch, and the es essence of what you're going to do, um, you can see that the stream is moving faster near the surface as opposed to near the bottom. The essence of what you'll be doing is for various depths, 0.1, one-tenth of the way down, 0.4, four-tenths of the way down, six tenths of the way down and eight tenths of the way down. You can use the stopwatch plus the floating debris to figure out how fast the water is going. So let's do one of those. Let's wait till the next time that stick sort of thing comes around and as soon as it passes the first log I will start my stopwatch and figure out how long it takes for that stick to travel the uh, five meter distance so the stick is starting to travel, and push the button wrong. We'll have to wait for that stick to come around again, and, uh, and I will start the stopwatch. And now this time I'll push the stop button instead and discover that it takes 11.6 seconds to travel 5 meters. The uh, sheet here is... Um, is actually set up um, this section number four. Well, first off, obviously, the stream is flowing fastest near the top. It's at, so, somewhere around the middle is the average, and somewhere near the bottom is the uh, slowest. Um, using your stopwatch, as I just did, you'll be able to measure how fast it takes a, per, a certain piece of debris to travel five meters. And, uh, and it's the, this table is suggesting you do it twice to get the average. Um, some of the values are filled in in order to give you a hint about um, how the, what the trends are in this data and to see if you've been able to calculate it easily and to cut your workload do down a little bit. Um, what this shows right here is um, that um, after you've calculated the average travel time, through two travels at each of the four depths, you'll be able to put those average travel times in this table, which I think I actually filled in more than I expected to, but that's to, just to your benefit. Um, and then you divide the distance by the time and find the velocity. And here are two of the velocities. Um, one of them is already plotted on the graph. 
you'll go ahead and plot the other three velocities and you'll have a th four dots and you can connect those dots and then once those are plotted you'll be able to um, compute um, what the what the average velocity is in the stream and you'll be able to find out at what depth the average velocity occurs based upon the graph that you've drawn so before you can actually but you'll fill out the graph and uh, then before um, you're able to use the graph to find out at what depth the average velocity is you'll need to compute the average velocity um, based upon based upon this uh, this table here there are instructions for filling out this table in the uh, in the um, instruction sheets on the web page so um, this shows where the depth is and then um, question five is just an extension on question four this is the depth the relative depth what percentage going down from the top you would need to go to in order to find the average velocity if you know the percentage um, then all you need to do for a real stream that has a real depth is multiply the percentage 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 wherever the average velocity is times the true depth of the stream to find out the true depth that you would place your stream sensor in order to find out where that average depth is. So that's, uh, that's the essence of the calculation. Questions 6 and 7 are, um, are simple descriptive questions. The most difficult questions are the ones where you have to, um, well, it's actually relatively easy to time how fast the object moves, to find out the velocities at four different depths, which is shown here, to plot the velocities at four different depths, calculate the average velocity by doing, uh, by doing this, um, filling in this graph, and averaging up the nine values and then uh, and then actually finding where that average velocity occurs on the uh, on the graph that you just drew and that's the essence of this entire lab